channel. Good morning, vlogsters. Happy Sunday. Warm coffee in the morning when he cool. Um, I just thought I would come on here and spend a Sunday morning with you. Just talk about whatever. Uh, hopefully that's okay. Just a, a bunch of rambling mess on, from the couch. Uh, it's time to wake up. Uh, but happy Sunday. Hopefully you're watching this on Sunday. What does mom say? Good Lord, boiling and the creeks don't rise. So let's take that first sip together because my brain's got froggy. Oh, man. I know it's just pushing curry bug buttons, but that man makes some good coffee. <laughs> well, first I'd like to say good morning. I have been up for hours, but I just got out of bed, if that makes any sense. I was waiting and waiting and waiting in bed and my brain was just like not shutting down of all the things that we want to do and the excitement and the, the steps ahead and that kind of thing. But the next step in our room makeover is to get Jimmy's dresser into the dining room office den. And this morning I was laying there and I was like, you know what, Jerry? You could do that yourself and it'll take almost no time. If he pulls out the drawers, I could stand it up. I could use it for support. See, the only reason I use my walker is to support my weight and I can use the dresser to support my weight and I could walk it and then I can maneuver it and I could, you know, I'm graceful with that kind of stuff. And I could just like boogie. When, I, when I'm on the walker, I boogie. I'll tell you the truth. Need it is not relative. Um, if you have arthritis, then you know that there's days like, there's days when you need, you need braces and there's days when you don't. There's days when you can go to the Walmart and just use the shopping cart. And there's days when you need that little ride on thing. So do you know what I mean? Like that. So there are days where I really need my walker to support my weight. And then there's days I use it just to help me go faster. Um, otherwise I would have to go really slow. And, and there are areas in the house where I really can't support myself. Um, there's like no furniture or no walls or anything, you know. Um, my shoulder is getting, is, is making great strides too, I want to tell you. Um, I had this like uh, shoulder injury from resulting from vaccine administration or whatever serva it's called. Um, and it's improving every day. Um, it's achy, but it's usually like uh, I get a lot further with the medication. So like my body would say, hey, look, it's gonna be, the pain would go like, hey, it's almost four hours, I can tell. But it's it's stretching, so that's good. I'm, I appreciate it. And I'm trying to do all my exercises and I'm trying to work it out. Cause that's important. Don't just sit and be stagnant, you know? But today I got on like, I don't know, I got like antsy and I was like, I'm gonna sit at the gym. This is what I said to him this morning. I said, I need to do something and I need you to support me and I need you to not get upset with me and I need you to forgive me for saying this to you so early in the morning. He's like, what? I said, I need to move the dresser myself and I wanted to do it now, but I could see that you're not awake enough. And he's like, and he laid back in the bed and he thought about it. But then he didn't say anything. So then I was like, oh, is he thinking about it? Or is he contemplating? Like, what's going on? Is he mad? So then I get this thing where I just can't stop talking. And it gets him very frustrated, especially early in the morning. And I don't do it all the time. It's like every time I do it, it upsets him. But I don't do it every day. And I don't do it to upset him. But some days, you know, I have my own issues. And some days that it comes out like that. And I want him, I, I hope that he would recognize like, oh, she isn't normally like this. Let's see what's going on with her. And this morning he did, he, he got upset. He snapped at me and just verbally like nothing bad or whatever. And then he said something that hurt my feelings. I was just sitting in the room and contemplating and uh, wallowing in my own self pity of what's going on with me and how frustrated I am with X, Y, and Z. And um that uh, he came back in a few minutes later and he said, I'm really sorry for snapping at you. I didn't mean to. Um, I'm just really tired. I didn't sleep well. It seemed to me, and I've been up since, I've, and this is not whatever, I've, I've been up 
since five. It seemed like he slept pretty well since five anyway, but he said he didn't, so I trust him. Um, but sometimes you sleep and your body just doesn't, you know, you could sleep for eight hours and you don't feel rested. Um, for like, especially when you have sinus issues, a lot of times you have trouble breathing or when you have arthritis and you have trouble, like you, you're, you're, you're moving around a lot. So you're not really rested, that kind of thing. But you know, it happens every once in a while to everybody. So he said, I'm sorry. I got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just want to take control back of my body. I want to take the power back from this pain. And it's so freaking frustrating. I always tell you guys too: have grace for you, have, give yourself grace, have patience with your body, have patience with yourself. But I'm only a human being, just like you guys. I'm not anything special. I don't have all the answers. And sometimes I can't. Sometimes I try and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. You know, and I remind myself, okay, I'll snap or I'll, I'll get frustrated with myself and then I'll calm down and I'll say, okay, listen. Please, take it easy. Do what you can. Do what you think you can't do. Shout out to the Fry Life. Um, it, it's just difficult sometimes. Sometimes it's really, really difficult. I try to take care of my body so my body could take care of me. Uh, my body took really good care of me the first 40 years of my life. Um, if the next 40 I have to take better care of it, then I will. I, I don't know, you know. Um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, uh, first of all. I have mentioned before that I am not um, doing low-carb keto to lose weight. It will, I am losing weight, but that's not my goal. Um, we talked about before as well is that, you know, even though I'll lose weight, it will be only easier, the only thing that'll make it easier on my body for the arthritis is my body will, my knees will have less weight to carry. But, um, and I know that for sure, but it's still, it won't make the arthritis go away. It won't cure it. Um, you know, it won't uh, magically disappear. If I end up having to have a knee replacement or something, I probably will have to lose a lot of weight. But that to me is, somewhere down the road. Um, to me, I've never known anything different. To me being overweight or obese or a BBW or uh, plus size or fat or whatever is just like me being a blonde or having blue eyes. It is just who I am and who I've always been. Does that mean that I wouldn't be accepting of the change? No. Does that mean I'm forcibly preventing myself from losing weight? No. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not trying to eat in the calorie deficit. I am not able to move as much, so I am eating less just because I know I'm not able to move like uh, even, you know, like three months ago or whatever. So it is what it is, but yeah, I mean, it happens. You gotta give yourself grace. You gotta, it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. I never really thought about it too much. And I guess I feel like a lot of people feel that way. There's some people I feel like who have just been worrying their whole lives. And then there's people who just like, it is what it is. God's will be done. Um, and just do the best you can every day. That's why I kind of always have like lived my life, you know, um, listen to my body, feed it when it's hungry, listen to my emotions less, feed that when it's hungry, <laughs> feed that less when it's hungry kind of thing. But um, I, I do have some, some like reminders just to remind you guys that if there are people who are saying things that are negative or harmful to you or hurtful to you, I know it's hard to ignore them, but you've, you've got to try to ignore them. 
Um, I appreciate everybody who stands up for me in the in the comments, but I don't. It's not necessary. I do appreciate it. Whenever I see these things, people, I, I say, well, first of all, they're extremely ignorant, and I don't mean ignorant like, well, I guess I do. Ignorant just means uneducated. I don't like when people comment on things that I've obviously addressed in the video and then they'll comment like whatever it is that like you obviously didn't watch is what I'm saying. Like they'll be like, well, you should do this. And I'm like, well, you obviously didn't watch me say that because I already talked about that or whatever. Um, I very, 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 very rarely <laughs> I'm looking for unsolicited advice. Every once in a while, I do like to hear from you guys if you've had like, if you've had knee surgery or if you, you know, you have a, this, if I have this trouble on this medication, like this arm thing, if you also had arm pain or shoulder pain when you got your vaccine, I was talking to mom and she said, oh, every year when I was little, I used to get shoulder pain. I didn't know it was a thing. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I, that's different. That's not giving me advice. That's just like, you know talking to me, that sense of camaraderie they get when we're in a similar situation. But then there's so many people just give you unsolicited advice and it's advice that's nonsense. You know, I'm not 21. I'm not 21, this isn't a new experience for me. You're not, first of all, not teaching me anything new. Somebody, um, I guess I vlogged one time about the bathroom and I was like, in 20 years, Jimmy has, you know, Jimmy, in 20 years, have you ever cleaned the toilet? And then he did a bathroom cleaning video right after that, just coincidentally. And somebody got on me like, you know, you said he never cleaned the bathroom. And then he cleaned the bathroom. I was like, well, first of all, I said, did you ever clean our toilet? Not a toilet. My husband's worked in service industry. He's cleaned plenty of bathrooms. <laughs> just has never cleaned ours. <laughs> I mean, and I say never, because even in that video, I said, when I'm away and I'm bringing people home, he'll always clean it. Like, you know, but my point of saying in 20 years, have you ever had a dirty toilet or have you ever cleaned out a toilet is just being like, as an example of things that you kind of take for granted. Now I take for granted from him too, but he really, I try to appreciate the things that he does. And I've always said that to him. And we've talked about that before. Sometimes I think like, do I say thank you too much that he doesn't? Like, is it going on deaf ears? I try to appreciate him in other ways and show my love and affection in other ways and stuff. But do, there are things that just go unnoticed. Like, you know, when I clean out the refrigerator, all he sees is that he can find what he's looking for. When I haven't cleaned out the refrigerator, this refrigerator is a mess, I have to clean it out. Like, okay. You know, like that kind of stuff. You just don't, it's just, it's just like typical. Like you don't notice it when it's clean. You only notice it when it's dirty. You don't notice it when it's working. You only notice when it's broken. So like that kind of thing. It's just like what I meant by the toilet situation. Um, today is Saturday, even though you're watching this on Sunday. And I really wanted to get to the Dollar General using my coupon. We have a Dollar General in town that has a huge home section and I've seen some beautiful things on there. Um, but I just, I just need to finish this project and it's kind of like frustrating at the same time. I really meant to go to the Dollar Tree in Salem. I told you guys about that and I'm sorry about if it was TMI for you guys, but it happens, you know, um, I want, I, 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 the reason I have always started this and the reason I've always done what I'm doing on this platform in both my main channel and the vlog channel is because I was not represented. I was not represented on YouTube. There was no plus size, arthritic, limited mobility people who did cleaning and cooking and crafting and organization and um, teaching of, of any sorts um, without makeup on, without getting their nails done, without getting all dressed up, um, 
with confidence. I mean, just all these things that I wasn't represented. So I did this to be representative of, and I know that if I wasn't representative, represented, there has to be hundreds of thousands of people who aren't represented. And that's why I do this. I do this for you. I do this for you to find somebody out there that's like you. If you are watching this and you are not in a line with those things, that's okay. If you're still interested in my life, that's okay. Stick around. But if you're just coming to look to spread your BS hate onto people to tell them how to live their lives because your life is so freaking miserable, go away. There's no point. I sit and I watch and then I listen to these comments and somebody was even like, oh, I unsubscribe to their channel because they won't get credit for me. Sister, you watching my video to talk all this smack uh, is credit for me. So whatever you think you did wrong. You guys hate it so much. Stop watching it. Stop supporting us. Go away. Like, I just don't understand. So it's just, I think you guys like getting a rise out of Jim. I think that's really what it is. And I feel really bad because he doesn't deserve it. He's had a very difficult upbringing and he doesn't deserve to be bullied and harassed anymore. Neither do I for that matter, but that's beside the point. Um, I'm also getting very tired of one other aspect and I'm probably going to get a lot of like lousy comments about this from the same group that just they keep changing their screen names. It's really funny because they'll like, they'll have conversations and one of them like, oh, I changed my screen name, but it's easy to do. I'm like, well, that's stupid because that just proves to me that you have no life. Get a life. Find something fun to do. If this is fun for you, seek help because it shouldn't be. Um, anyhow. <laughs> Sorry. Um... People keep telling me to get rid of all my stuff. I, and not even like all my stuff. They're just like, oh, first of all, I love when people call me a hoarder. Have you ever seen that show? Trust me, I came from a house that was so small with a lot of people that even though it looked a mess, it was just because there were a lot of people in a small house. You know, it's like everybody's allowed to have some things. But when you have a lot of people and they all have a little things, it ends up being a lot of things. Um, so I'm not comfortable in an empty space. I've said this thousands of times. And I'm not comfortable waste being wasteful, like buying something just to give it away. I mean, it's different if you buy it for a gift, but to buy it to show you just to donate it, that's it's wasteful. I mean, it's just wasteful. Um, I'm so looking forward to this process, but I will tell you the truth. Kind of scared. And I don't know that this is going to happen, but this is what scares me. Okay, so I'm not trying to call them out. I'm not trying to be negative. This is just where my fear and anxiety lie with this project. When we have done projects like this in the past, when the project has completed to where Jim's gotten everything he's wanted. His motivation just ends. So for me, I understand that we put the craft room last because we kind of have to put the craft room last because of the way all the furniture needs to move. But I'm afraid that he's going to stop his motivation just when I'm ready to get into my space and do what we need to do in there. So that's where my fear lies. And again, I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't, he's never indicated that it's going to happen, but that's just been like the history of the way things have been with us. So I'm dealing with that on top of the fact that I can't help like I want to. I'm helping, I'm helping. Um, some people were concerned about the day I did the linens. I was really in a lot of pain that day. I tried to say it in the voiceover. I know and everybody watches every minute, but I was in a lot of pain that day. Um, but I wanted to get in there and do it despite, despite the pain. Um, so people were concerned about me, how I looked and stuff, but 
truly, 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 it, it was just physical pain. Um, I, the video that went up today, hopefully you guys have seen it. They did some voiceover of Jim moving the furniture, but then I let Jim go ahead and take the reins. Um, hopefully you guys appreciated that because I appreciated him doing it. Like I said, he didn't have to videotape himself doing that for me, but he wanted to have the continuous story told of, of the, of the room move. So, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's next, you know, I want to get the dining room set up and everything put away. Um, and just have it be finished. Like I said, be, like I said in the voiceover, I want to get to the decorating part because that's the part that I enjoy the most. Um, and th and then to have it, the spaces be finished and functional, that's really important to me too. I really want to craft. It's just egging at me now. Um, but it's just, you know, yeah. Hopefully you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Mm. I did say that this vlog was going to be about everything and nothing, right? Um, I also wanted to address my doctor issue because I realized that I didn't really address my doctor issue um, recently. I addressed how I was feeling, but not my doctor issue. So the shoulder injury um, from the vaccine, um, I, other than pain management and physical therapy, the doctor, I telemedicine, my doctor said that that's what she could do for me. And I'm like, well, the pain's being managed and I am moving it around and I would have to pay for physical therapy um, or go out. I either have to go out of network or go out of town. And neither one of them is really an option right now. As far as my knee is concerned, I have to see an orthopedist. And I mentioned previously, there's one in St. Louis and one in Springfield. So on Monday, when we drove to Salem, that was like, a practice run to see how far I could drive and how well I would do driving that far so that I could see if I need to drive to either the city or to Springfield that I will be able to do that. Um, Lisa is coming on July 2nd so it's possible that I could have her bring me um, to, to the orthopedist but again I don't know what he'll do like I don't know what he can do I have arthritis they're gonna tell me to lose weight, which I am in the course of doing, even though I'm not trying to. And they'll tell me to do my physical therapy exercises, which I will. They cannot give me steroids because I am a diabetic. I really can't have steroid injections. Really elevate your blood sugar way too high. Um, I'm on anti-inflammatories already. So that's, you know, one of the other courses of treatment. Um, I, Think the only thing that I would like to see if I could get like a knee brace um, and I'll have to I'd have to get a custom one because over-the-counter ones um, my right leg is bigger than my left leg normally anyway um, and over-the-counter ones just don't go over my thigh they all roll because I have like this big meaty chunk right over in the inside of my kneecap and I always have it's not new um, so that's the only thing I think that I'm looking forward to getting out of visiting an orthopedist um is that hopefully I can get prescribed a new knee brace now the thing with my doctor hasn't changed um hopefully when Medicaid kicks in July 1st I'll be able to apply um state our our state was one of the states that didn't have Medicaid um expansion um so we have insurance but we have the cheapest insurance we can find and the in-network system it's only you can only use in-network doctors there's no percentage for out-of-network doctors i would have to pay out of pocket for whatever and just don't have that right now so just like millions of americans that have no insurance i'm in the boat you know like deciding on going to the doctor or living with pain or you know i'm glad i'm get, able to get my medicine I'm, I'm glad i'm able to telemed with my doctor she's amazing and I say telemed, I actually haven't had a telemed appointment. We message on the message board. Um, there's a message system that's really good. And, um, you know, my rib is all better. I mean, like I had a stitch in my rib. I don't know if you guys remember. That's all better. Um, is there anything else? 
I think that was it, right? I think that was it. Oh, it was my hip for a while, but that was really like the knee pain. It was just really like the knee pain favoring that, you know, every once in a while my hips like, eh, cause I'm walking weird. Uh, so I, whenever I get the chance, I stand up straight. I walk as like soldierly as possible, um, shoulders back, the whole bit, just to try to keep my posture as, as, as good as possible. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to give you guys that doctor update. And I realized I didn't give you the doctor update. Um, what's really weird because Columbia, which is north of here, um, has like the knee replacement center in the Midwest. It's like one of the top knee replacement things in the knee West, in the Midwest or knee. I don't know. That's their commercial. I, I don't know those statistics, but that's the commercial is they are the top knee and I don't want to say replacement because they do other things like specialist maybe uh orthopedist knee specialist in the midwest is what they advertise as and I was like why you know Jimmy's drive driven from Columbia that's where my eye doctor is so I was like oh if they had it there he could take me and drive me home or whatever um or I could drive there and see how I feel about driving home or whatever or halfway we could split it <laughs> um but they don't even have, like, they don't take my insurance. So it's like either that way or that way. Oh, it's very weird, but it's understandable, I guess. I don't know. The big cities, they always get the good doctors. That's one thing about, I will tell you, the one thing about the suburbs of New York City. Growing up in Nassau County and Long Island was so expensive. Everything was expensive. I feel like for a while, Nassau County was the most expensive county to live in. And now I think it's Suffolk County in the United States, I think. I, I, something like that. I, it goes, you know, every year changes because depending on property values and stuff. But everything's so expensive. However, the you pay for, you know, you have lots of choices. When I lived there and I had to find a doctor, there I have a... I, li I grew up in a town that didn't have a high school. It has two elementary schools and a middle school. And I had choices. I had like not the best insurance. And I had like four primary care physicians that would take my insurance in that little tiny town with no high school. So just to give you an idea. Plus if I wanted to go south two miles or north two miles, it, there was plethoras and more and more and more choices. So, um... That's when you can go like, ooh, you know, the doctor that I found is an HODO, ooh, uh, doctor of osteopathy and homeopathy, ooh, you know, like that's my kind of doctor. Um, the best way I could describe a doctor of osteopathy is, uh, in layman's terms, obviously there's lots of more significant, but they're the kind of doctor where you go like, oh. You know, Doc, my shoulder hurts. Be like, oh, well, what kind of pillow do you sleep on? Or, or, uh, how do you walk to the bathroom? Like, do you support yourself? How do you get off the couch? Like, they really just know that the whole body works together. Or you'd be like, oh, I'm not sleeping well. They're like, how's your digestive system? <laughs> I'm depressed. How's your gut? Because, you know, without that serotonin that's created in your gut, <laughs> Or whatever. I'm just, just that's how I thought about it, you know. Um, so anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, it was like choices. Uh, the, the food, the 24-hour choices of food and um, the varieties. Like here we have a good Chinese restaurant in the whole town in three counties. And it's not even great. It's not even New York good. It's Missouri good or mid my area good if that makes any sense um so it's just like <sighs> but i love it here as i mentioned previously it reminds me of when i grew up on long island in in the 70s kids play in the street they ride their bikes up and down you have to worry about anybody getting run over getting kidnapped you know who your neighbors are, you talk to your neighbors, you know, just for some people who grew up like this their whole lives, they don't know any different, but 
for me, you know, it, it was like this when I was growing up and then it stopped being like this as when I was an adult. We used to have a man um, who had had a stroke, lived down the block from us. We used to call him the candy man. And he used to come with like little suck on candies in his pocket uh, of his little coat. And he'd come and stand on the corner by my house and all the kids would come run in and get their little like penny candies, suck on candies or whatever. And he was so sweet. And when we would go trick-or-treating, we would say hi to him because his house was right on the trick-or-treat route. And, um, you know, just like the kinds of things. Like I used to go into the deli across the street from where I grew up. And, you know, the, the grandpa who owned the deli would just be like, Miss America. And they know who you are. And it's like, I'm not trying to sing the Cheers theme song or whatever, but that's what it was like, you know. It was like that growing up. And I feel like that's like that here. Um, so I, don't, I may not know like everybody in the whole city, but um, I know the people who live around me uh, and the Next Door app, I think I've told you guys about this before, there's an app called the ne Next Door and it tells you like the people who live in your neighborhood who've joined Next Door. So it's, you know, you get to know people, you know, you get to know people. Um, you don't mind knocking on someone's door when the kids are selling. Oh my God, I've got the cutest kids in this neighborhood. They sell like stuff for school, but they also, like one time they were selling pebbles. They went out to the thing and they collected a bunch of pebbles. They took them home, washed them, brought them in a cup and they were wondering if we would be interested in, excuse me, in buying pebbles. And I was curious how much they were. And they were like, oh, I, this big cup is a dollar, this small cup is 50 cents. I was like, ooh, and they're nice too. Like, you know, they're kids. You have to encourage. Um, even if they think the stupid old lady just bought her own rocks, it's fine. It's encouragement. You want to give them encouragement to keep trying and doing things to be successful. So they're very, very sweet. Um, yeah. And they come around when it's trick-or-treat time too. So you just have to recognize the faces and the kids get older and, you know, they grow up and you're like, oh. When I moved here, you were a little tiny and now you're big or whatever. Mm. Life is funny. Life is funny. It can turn on a dime. And that's really what, what um, I was talking about with a friend yesterday is that you need to find happiness in your everyday. Hopefully not at the expense of others. Because what's it all for if you don't, right? Um, if you can't make the world a happy place, hopefully the world can make you a happy person, if that makes any more sense. Um, find your happiness, create your happiness. Otherwise, what's it all for? just to say you were here, you know? And, you, and, and at any moment, I learned that from when my brother passed away. Things can change at any moment. There's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes. Sometimes you can see it coming, sometimes you just hit shadow blue. And um, yeah, just be right with yourself when it's time to go. Be right with the people around you when it's your time to go. This is why we don't go to bed angry. This is why we say I love you every night. Because nobody is promised tomorrow. But you are promised right now. Oh, guys, you are a blessing to me. And I hope, I hope, I hope I'm a blessing to you. I know so many of you have said that. It touches my heart so much. You have no idea. But I am so very grateful to have you to talk to, to chat with, just to even vent if I want to. Um, it just makes me feel like I have a purpose. And it's funny because there are some things that we talk about with like, I don't know if it's cause, it's cause and results or... Uh, causality. I can't remember exactly the terms, but 
I guess cause and effect is part of it, but then there's like, you can flip flop it. So here's what I'm trying to say. When my brother passed away, I had no desire to have purpose. I had no desire to share my misery. Um, so those two reasons were like why I wasn't creating. And then I had people encouraging me to start creating again. And I was trying to be like, do you understand that I cannot because I just don't have the, so it was kind of like that cause and effect sort of situation. I think part of that too is, and I'll tell you this right now, people look at you and you're overweight and they think like, oh, you're fat and that's why you have arthritis. I was like, do you ever think maybe I'm fat because I have arthritis? But you ever think like, you know, um, oh, you can't, you can't breathe when you run because, or you can't run because you can't breathe, so you should lose weight. Did you ever think maybe that I'm fat because I can't run because I can't breathe? Like just that mentality, just you, they get lost on it. So it's the same thing. It's like you can't create because you're sad, but then are you sad because you can't create? Because you lost your desire to create and that makes you more sad. So it's just like this, like sometimes it's a vicious cycle. Sometimes it's like the opposite of what you think immediately, you know. Um, <sighs> yep. Yep. Yeah, so having purpose, having you guys is really what gets me up and gets me dressed in the morning. Uh, that's not true. I'd get up and get dressed anyway, but it wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> How's that? A good answer. Okay. Listen, I love you. I want you guys to go out and have the best day. And I would like to quote one of my favorite TikTokers, Tabitha Brown. Because I feel like it's very apropos with all of the trolls that have been following Jim and I lately. You go have the most amazing day. But even if you can't, don't go messing up someone else's. Okay? All right. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.